This is July 10th, 1970, no, 1995. This is Jack Winnell interviewing Jim Saratelli, S-E-R-R-I-T-E-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Jim, where were you born? I was born in Chicago. When? I've lived here all my life, uh, 1951. I uh, grew up on the northwest side or on North Avenue in Austin for about, uh, until I was about 26. And um, I was interested in politics at that time because being on the northwest side, I remember all the elections, the precinct captain always came by, talked to my dad, talked to my mom. I wasn't old enough to vote, but I remember uh, all the neighbors too were interested in getting the alleys repaired, getting this done, that done. And sure enough, you go to their election day, and I've gone with my parents to vote. Uh, you know, there's a precinct captain in front, shaking your hands. I mean, I couldn't vote, but I mean, the usual is everything we know in Chicago politics. And stuff did get done. But then we're going back. Uh, so we're going back to, to when you were like six, 14, 15, 16. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at Lane Tech. So I kind of broke off from the northwest side to the north side. And I went there from 1964 to 68. And I was still interested in politics. What did but you not major then. in in high school? Just basically college. Okay. Just college and Did you go to business. college? Yes. Where'd you go? University of Illinois. I uh, in Chicago Circle. Okay. Majored in finance. And I graduated there. And uh, I went to GATX Corporation as internal auditor. As, and then I went to DePaul University. I got a master's degree in accounting. What year was the master's degree? Uh, 1979. Okay. When did you um, have your first gay experience? Uh, 1974. It was, um, I, was pretty, I was 23 years old. I was pretty much in the closet. And I went to San Francisco on a business trip on an audit. And I... Um, I don't know, I was just curious and walked around North Beach and I finally got the gumption to go to one of the gay bathhouses in, uh, near where the hotel was. And I went to, uh, I think it was called Days at the time, on Broadway, at the end of North Beach. And then you came home from San Francisco and how'd your life change? Uh, not that much. I was still a little bit closeted. Now but you were working at the time, obviously. Yes. Yes. And did you have? You, but you hadn't. You weren't back in grad school yet. Right? No, I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't start yet. Okay. And so you came back to Chicago. Then where'd you go in Chicago? We, you came back from vacation, and all of a sudden. Oh, it was, it wasn't vacation. It was business. Business. Okay. That was business. Yeah. You came back from business trip, and you'd already had your first gay experience. Then mm -hmm. what happened? Oh, eventually I uh, kind of wormed my way into uh, man's country. <laughs> And I had a number of uh, different times over there. And I was still a little bit afraid. I was uh, pretty much closeted because I um, grew up a conservative Italian fam a family. Uh, it wasn't that bad, but I mean, it's, it's just the way it was brought up. And I didn't know any better being on the northwest side. And um, eventually, uh, this went on for a number of years, I just met somebody. Sure enough, I go to Bijou Theater for a lot of the same reasons. And I met somebody who kind of really brought me out so socially because we went to his house, we uh, tricked. And um, he was very nice and he insisted on calling me again. He brought me out to social circles. What was his name? John Campbell. You know, you're not going to forget that though. <laughs> well, I won't if you don't want me to. Well, well you could if you want. Okay, and uh, he is, um, I'm really grateful for him. Is it? Is it? Okay, John Campbell. You, you, you could say, yeah, John Campbell. Not, he's the, not the guy who owns the bathhouse. No, no, it's not, it's not the same. Oh, that's Jack Campbell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we've we we Okay, all right. On the political things, yeah. Um, no, this is John Campbell. and um, So this would have been about uh, 76 or so? Actually, it was later than that. It was like 1978 or 79. Okay, you, so was, from, you had your master's degree by then? I had my master's degree since 79. So, it was before or after the master's degree? This was before. Okay. Right. Then what happened? Um, after I met him, and I realized what gay life is really like. It's the social parties and every all, all the nice things. I started going to bars and socializing with him. And we had a little relationship. It didn't last that long because um, maybe it lasted almost a year because as I'm finding out these new experiences, I'm finding out i got to explore. So, obviously, the thing just broke apart. 
but I'm really grateful to him. I haven't sure. talked to him in a number of years, but um, it was very, very nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here you are in uh, 1980, breaking out, mm -hmm. and um, you had a political bent to you, obviously. You yes. You kind of said that already. And, and how did you get in? What happened next? Here's what happened. I um, was working at this company, and I, I entered a position of management where I was assistant controller after I got my master's degree in accounting of data processing. And the woman that worked for me, her husband was Jane Burns, Commissioner of Inspectional Services, Bill Duggan. And um, I've always had admiration of Jane Byrne. Well, we started talking on and on and on, and eventually it got stronger and stronger. And With the woman or with her husband? With uh, the woman. Okay. We're, and we're getting closer, and even though her last name is Duggan, she's an uh, Italian woman, just like my mother. I mean, we got along great. This went on for a number of months, years, whatever, and here comes Jane up for election again. And uh, she doesn't know my story yet, but, uh, you know, it's because I just adored Jane at the time. After all, she stopped the raids on the bars and all of that, and I was always interested in politics. Now I got a little in. And now I'm finding out I need little things done around my house, here and there. Well, it's always nice to stick a word in here and there, and you know, you get, because at that time I moved to North, to North Side, where I currently live at Irving and Broadway, Irving and Clarendon, and things were getting done. So I got interested in politics. And um, we worked, let's see, I was interested in what Janie wanted to do for the next election. Well, they had their hands full already with staff, and then um, what happened is that they said that there's a person that's working at 46 Ward, Jerry Orbeck, who wants to run for election because Ralph Axelrod was quitting. And um, I forget exactly how I hooked up with him or how I met him, it was through Jane Byrne contacts. And um, I met him, he was running for alderman against um, there's four candidates, uh, Charlotte Neufeld himself, Paul Siegel, and um, GNX something Smith. Now, what, do you remember what year this was? 1983. Okay. I, I want to say Ed Smith, but it wasn't. Um, something Smith. Okay. And um, the four-way race. And um, For the 46th The 46th war, the Aldermanic campaign. And what happened, I, like, like I said, I forget exactly how I hooked up with Jerry Orbeck, but uh, he was in Ralph Axelrod's uh, or, or organization and Ralph was retiring. And I hooked up with him and they, um, they took a liking to me immediately. I told them, you know, I want to help, blah, blah, blah. Well, they really weren't all that familiar with gay issues. I mean, they knew some of it, but not some of it. And um, I said, I, I came right out in the open, I said, look, I'm gay, I want to help. Immediately, we went, uh, they put me like in charge of all the gay issues. I consulted with the campaign staff on, let's say a daily or a couple day notice. We went uh, and we set up a schedule. We went to bars. We put ads in uh, Gay Chicago, Gay Life at the time. We met Renslow. We met, well, of course, Jerry knew Renslow already. We met a lot of people. Jerry who? Or, or back. Okay. And uh, we met a lot of people with me. And of course, I used to bowl at uh, the Marigold, so I knew about Fagan Holes. So I connected Jerry with uh, Fagan Holes. We did crawls because I knew a few, a few of the people at Gay Chicago because we placed ads and stuff. We got photographers. Same thing with Gay Life. And this went on and on and on uh, for the election time. And uh, I basically did all the gay issues. We did what would be considered um, well the right things to do. But Jerry believed in it too. He says, well, I, I don't care, you know. We well, already are. Well, can you define one or two of those gay issues? Well, at that time we didn't have a gay rights ordinance. And that was in 1983. He said, um, you know, no, I support that. He said, there's no problem with that. He said, you know, hey, people are people. Sure. Um, he wasn't really... Uh, free liquor person, meaning, you know, open sex, open bars, all that stuff. But I mean, you know, he tolerated, you know, a lot of things as long as, you know, it's under control. And um, I took him everywhere, too. And he, 
Well, he was never in a gay bar. He was married with children. And um, very accepting. So what would you do when you took him to a gay bar? Introduce him to people I knew. Introduce him to bartenders. We walked around the perimeter there, introduced him to all the people. Of course, he wanted the right times. He wouldn't go at 1 in the morning, of course, because they're too blitzed and they're looking for other things. No, we went at like uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Sure. We went all the bars in the ward and uh, just talk to people, you know, about the issues, what they were concerned about, mm -hmm. and just got a, pretty much a feedback. Like, I kind of knew what a lot of the issues were, but it's nice to get another sample. You always need a dissenting opinion. And Jerry was the kind of guy I um, liked to identify with, because basically I'm a um, conservative on economics, but I'm a liberal on social issues. And he seemed to be a lot of the same thing. So I just identified with him. And Charlotte Newfell, I met her, I just wasn't... I couldn't identify with her. I couldn't read her. I had to find with Jerry. We went around, and um, he got elected. Good. By 66 votes. Oh, well, hey. Yeah, well. Probably some hands he shook in the bar, huh? Well, I'll tell you something. Everyone could take credit for those 66 votes. I probably could, too, but I'm not going to say it was me. <laughs> but, I mean, we really did uh, We really did the route. Placed, uh, you know, the ads. We really worked the crowds and see what the issues were. And we understood what uh, people really wanted to see. Well, that must, meant, that must have made you feel good that your candidate won. It did. It did. Did you celebrate it all? Uh, yeah, but it was like a narrow victory because there were challenges in course immediately. I mean, it was celebrating, but it was like immediately court fights. Yeah. It took several months before we knew we really won. By that time, then... Um, the Gay Pride uh, parade was starting, and of course, um, I wanted to get Jerry in there, and he wanted to go, and we had our staff, and uh, they went too. We had a couple of gay people on staff, beside myself. We went in there, and it was the same year, even though Jane Byrne lost, she did go in there. <laughs> a little bit of coaxing, she did go in there. Harold was the mayor, he elected not to go. And I don't remember if he sent a representative or not. This is in 1983. Mm -hmm. I really don't remember. But uh, it was just quite nice just to go down that gay pride parade. You know, I newly elected aldermen and, you know, the staff. And it was pretty nice. <laughs> it was pretty nice. I really, really enjoyed that. So uh, who was who? Well, Jerry's in the middle over here. Of course, I'm on the left. I had a little more hair. Uh, that's Cedric, he was with us, and Donna Wood. She helped on the campaign staff a lot, and I forget who was driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was symbolic about this whole thing, this was the first gay pride parade any politician participated in. Wow. And I got a hold of Rich Pfeiffer, and at that time, they didn't even know what to do. And to my knowledge, but I could be corrected, it was only... Cherry and Jane Byrne, the only two politicians, but I could be corrected on it. I don't think that Bernie Hansen was there, and Bernie got elected the same time that Cherry did. Good. And that was, to me, that was, uh, that was something. I mean, you know, being the first ones in there. Sure. And maybe Rich could verify it, who could be there. But it was 1983. So you are a successful politico, huh? Yeah. Now what happened? Now I'm on the campaign staff. <laughs> I mean, uh, immediately he wanted me to uh, the, tre tre the treasurer of all his campaigns, and I did. He wanted to run for a Democratic committeeman, and he put, immediately put me on the aldermanic account and the committeeman's account. And he did win committeeman's election uh, February of 84, I believe it was. Now he's a Democratic committeeman, also the alderman. Now we're starting to push for the gay rights ordinance. And uh, what ordinarily happens in city council, it wasn't done by Harold for whatever reason. The new mayor typically kills all the old legislation from the old council. For whatever reason, and it's not known, this was not done. So everything that was tabled was active in 84. Nobody knows why. There's some experts maybe could find out why, but, you know, whatever. Gay rights uh, thing was bottled up in the Committee of Human 
relations or human resources or human rights or whatever it was. And Miriam Humes was the um, was the uh, chirper uh, chirper of that. Well, there's a lot of pressure on a lot of us to get the gay rights ordinance out on the committee. It was on Bernie and Jerry and some other aldermen, but don't 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 hurt me too. We got help from um, Bill O'Donnell. You have to check that name. He's the he was the legislative person of the city council. He knows how to write all the the things. I think it's Bill O'Donnell, but I don't I forget the name exactly. I could see his face, I just can't picture the name right now. Right. And he was what ten, fifteen years there. He helped us. Uh, I think I went there with um, Renslow at the time. Could have been Jim Flint too, but I'm not sure. And we found out where the ordinance was. So we started to lobby Mary Humes, and that didn't work too well. She didn't want to bring it up. Well, uh, eventually, I think it was October 12th, of 1984, Columbus Day, or give or take a day. Um, we saw an opening. Bernie was talking to Marion Hume, so was Jerry, and they lobbied some other aldermen, and they might have brought it out of committee. What happened, though, is that, um, now you could print this, I don't know. Greg Hines was a reporter from the Learner Paper. I forget his name. He, Greg Hines? Greg Hines. From which paper? Learner Paper. He was in the audience. The press audience, because he was a re legitimate reporter. He saw Jim Flint, myself, Bill Kelly, and Renslow all wearing suits, all there waiting for this historic moment of bringing it out of committee and voting for it. Because, from what I understand, Jerry Orbeck and Bernie were working out some sort of a coup to get this thing called out and voted. Somehow it didn't work that day, it almost worked. And um, from what I remember, Greg had a story printed. Well, that ended that. It killed the ordinance. Because mm -hmm. once it got out in the public, that ended that. It just wouldn't come out. No one would vote for it. Now, what was the name of the Learner Paper? I'm, 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 I think it was the Learner Paper. It, it could have been the Skyline or... Okay, I'll look it up. Yeah, I can't. It's fine. Whatever it was in the neighborhood. And Greg could verify that he might not. <laughs> but anyway, this was in, I think, 84, October 12th. Or, and the next time was going to be the 19th, the last, uh, the next week. Never got out. Mm -hmm. Got bottled up again. Because then once it got out that they're voting for a gay rights ordinance, because there was a trade-off. And uh, I don't know what deals the aldermen made between themselves, but if it was going to be in the omnibus or something, it would have passed. Never did. Never did. And um, got bottled up. I remember being on the council floor and all that. Want to pause that a second? Go ahead. Yeah, here we are. I'm, um, you know, there's what me and Jane Byrne at the Gay Pride Parade we were neck and neck because I met her already when she was mayor through my contacts. And um, I just fell in love with her, but already she, uh, she lost. When I went to rally for Jane Byrne, I think the greatest thing that happened is that um, she was saying, you know, I don't care. You know, you guys live your lives, whatever you want. I know she, she stopped to raise in the bars and stuff, and that's what really, it was just wonderful. I mean, she just didn't care. She chose you as a person. And that's what really uh, turned me on to her. And she did come to the parade, even though she lost. And that was very, very surprising. Uh... So here we are in October of 84, and the uh, gay rights bill gets dies in committee. Right. What happened after that? Where did you go from there? Okay, um, in the meantime, I, uh, Jerry was still committeeman. We didn't do all that much because, um, well, he's a committeeman without, without having the post of alderman. Oh, did he, lo he lose an election or something? Yeah, well, he, he lost his alderman. Because, oh, I'm sorry. Here's what happened. Uh, I'm sorry. I was uh, with him in '83, and '84, uh, and um, '37, and uh, we did a lot. We tried to get the thing out. It never worked. 
We try to do a lot of things for our uh, the community. One important accomplishment that we did accomplish, and this was through our campaign staff, and it was through myself, Bob Gaines, and uh, Jerry D. Alderman, it's Jerry Horbeck, and Bernie Hansen, and Mike Quigley. You probably know the name of Mike Quigley. Sure. We worked, we introduced all of us together as a team, the first gay ordinance ever. And this I could take the partial credit for. All of us. Bernie, Jerry, myself, Bob Gaines, Mike Quigley. We actually got a resolution passed for $100,000. This is in the early 80s. $100,000 passed in the city budget for AIDS funding. The first thing ever done. Never done before. I think it was in 1984-85. It was never done. That was a tremendous accomplishment. Not only would it get the, re uh, the resolution done, it did get approved through Burke. Through? Ed, Ed, Ed Burke. I mean, there was, uh, he was the finance chairman at the time when he had a 29-21. It was passed. That was the first major piece, actually the first piece of lit to my knowledge, because I'm not an expert on this. Oh, the guy's name was Bill Donaldson. Before, remember, I didn't know the guy's name. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bill Donaldson with the. Okay, um, the first piece, piece of gay love uh, legislation, to, to, to my knowledge, in Chicago, a hundred grand, and um, for uh, AIDS. I, I don't remember if it was AIDS research or whatever. I got the document at home if you ever want. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I got the document. Okay. That was passed. So then. So that um, was a significant accomplishment. That was the first. So uh, Jerry's like there for four years in '83. Yes. So then they come to '87. Did he not rerun, or what happened? He reran. Um, Helen Schiller ran against him. Also Nancy Kazak. And I got my own personal opinions how the election went, but I don't know if I want to give them all. Um, basically, Schiller ran a negative campaign, but. Let's say a very strong campaign. We ran a pretty strong campaign. A little negative too here and there. Nancy Kazak ran as, as an independent with the backing of Charlotte Newfeld and a lot of the other independent uh, liberals. And um, the way it wound up, I think Jerry got about 43 or 44 percent of the vote. Nancy Kazak got around maybe. 15 so percent and Schiller got the rest. Um, we were talking Nancy Kasich ahead of time about dropping out because we knew that we, we didn't have a clear majority and um, no, 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 no one had a clear majority. She wouldn't do it even though all the polls showed there's no way in hell that she could even come in a running. Wouldn't do it. You could form your own opinion on why she stayed where she was, but there was a runoff, and Harold Washington was mayor at the time. Helen Schiller won narrowly, but she won. And I say, you can form your own opinions, but it's funny. After Nancy lost, even though the polls show she had maybe 15% of the vote, all of a sudden she got appointed uh, lawyer for the Park District at 70 something thousand a year by Harold after the election. You could just form your own opinions on that one. Hmm. It'd be unfair to comment that readers could form their own opinion. And that's in a record. That could be researched. Right. <laughs> so Jerry's still committing him for another 11 months or so. And um, he more or less just uh, faded out. He did get appointed uh, judge by the circuit courts. Uh, I don't know that process exactly, but he got appointed a judge. And now he's a judge in uh, Cook County Court in, in Skokie, and he resides in Glenview, and he's quite successful. Okay. In the meantime, though, um, during that time frame, Jerry was committeeman, and um, I met Ed Rosewell. I met Ed Rosewell for many years. He's Cook County Treasurer. He got first elected in 1960-sometime. And um, he went to some of the events that um, 
I, I, I was with when I was with the Greater Chicago Gay and Lesbian Democrats. And um, you probably have something in there on that. I was uh, chairman of the Political Action Committee and treasurer at a later time. Let's. Um, I'm starting to go to another chapter. Yeah, let, let's. Because now the next the next chapter is what Ed Roswell. Okay. Um, in um, in 1976, there was. Um, is this on? It's on, yeah. Okay. Well, now, another thing, too, Jerry definitely appointed me, um, you know, gay liaison, obviously, as treasurer all the campaigns, and that kind of wraps up, you know, the whole chapter there. Okay. Um, in, uh, in 76, there was a petition circulated uh, to back Alderman Kelly's gay rights bill. Now, you wouldn't have been active in any of that in 76. No, I wasn't, but that was the same bill, because he was the chairman of that thing that Marion Humes took over. Okay. And that, and that, that is the same bill. That is the same bill. During that time when we tried to bring it up, there were several discussions with um, Renslow, Jim Flint, uh, and, and, and Alderman Kelly at the time. Um, Even though he wasn't Alderman at the time because of his other problems. I, um, when did you be... When did you become active in gay things? In '79 or before? That's about 1980, I would okay. say. All right. I'd say about 1980. Okay. Um, were you uh, did Were you part of? Um, in 1979, in May, was the first International Mr. Leather contest. Were you any part of that? Or? No, I wasn't. Okay. All right. Um, in May of 79, there was a raid on Carol's Speakeasy. And a couple of days later, a week later, there was a second raid on Carol's, and then on the new flight. And then there was a big protest held to mm. protest the, the raids on gay bars. Were you any part of them? No, I wasn't. I read about them. But at that time, I was a little bit new. But I was starting mm -hmm. to go out to the bars more actively. Mm -hmm. But when I read about that, I kind of withdrew for a little bit. Okay. Um, in 1980, Chuck founded or helped to found the Prairie State Democratic Club. Was that what you were talking about? That was actually the Gay Chicago, wait, Greater Greater Chicago Gay and Lesbian Democrats. Okay. Before it was Prairie State. Okay. No, I got involved in that when Jerry Orbeck got elected, and that would have been 1983. Okay. So right. that thing must have ran for three years without me. Sure. Well, I, I can't Whatever. believe it would have. But uh, I'm sure it <laughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, let's see. Um, well, during Jerry's tenure, I mean, we did a lot of fundraising events, like, you know, we did stuff for Howard Brown, where... Uh, we were at the Paradise, and Jerry was a dealer. His wife was a dealer. Eddie Roswell was a dealer. I was a dealer. We, the police came by, and me and one of the other guys talked them out of it. That's neither here nor there. But I mean, we did a lot of fundraising stuff and things for the community uh, during that tenure. Um, I don't know what was the tone yet. I mean, we really did what we really wanted to do for the community at that time. W were you? Um part of the Howard Brown organization at all? No, I wasn't. Um, I was just uh, I was just help, help, okay. help, helping him through Har Harley McMillian. Harley um, McMillian, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, can, how did you have, or did you have an association with Jim Flint? I met Jim through um, uh, the political club first time, and um, we took a liking to each other because he liked politics, I liked politics, and I had in with an alderman that he didn't know yet. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's not the right way to say well, it. But let's just say I, you know, I had, you know, I knew someone. Do you remember where you met Jim? No, not was exactly. Was it a meeting or something? Or? Oh, at the, um, I know what it was. It was some sort of, uh, I tried to get in with the Great Chicago Gain Lesbian Democrats at one of the functions. And someone said Jim's with Jerry Orbit. And it was one of the functions, and then me and him connected, and we finally met, and the rest is history, and we just... Well, why don't you tell me friends. about that history? Okay, with Jim Flint, we just, um, 
you know, we're both political conservatives when it comes to economics and social liberals. At least that's my opinion of Jim. I mean, he may have a different opinion of himself, but I mean, that's what I think of. And um, it's just that uh, we had a lot of the same agenda, how politics should be run. Was this before or after he ran for, didn't before. he run for office? This before. Is before he ran for office. Before. Okay. And I introduced him to my alderman at the time, Jerry Orbeck, and um, they hit it off. They hit it off very well. Matter of fact, they hit it off so well, Jim sponsored some fundraising events for my alderman. And he was named, even though he didn't live in a ward, he was named, um, it's kind of hard to say, I mean, named a member of the ward or not a fit, you know what I mean, a friend, whatever you want to call it. Sure, okay. sure. A buddy. And... Um, we all became close friends. Jim was very instrumental in our race for committeemen. When, uh, matter of fact, that was shortly after Jerry got elected that uh, Jim got involved. And uh, I remember the committeeman's name when we won the election. Uh, it was Jim Splint, myself, Jerry Orbeck, and Jerry's wife. We went to, um, oh God, what's that place? Um, Ambassador Hotel, Pump Room. Okay, and we're drinking down for young champagne and all that celebrating. And Jim became a member of our, our of our organization, more or less, and he helped us a lot. And um, we just became good friends. Then, while Jerry, I think, was committeeman, Jim wanted to run for the county board. Jerry supported him fully. We put Jim on our ballot. We pushed Jim. Jim carried our ward for the county. I was treasurer of Jim's campaign. And Jerry Williams was the chairman, our campaign manager. Well, Jim, Jim lost. He didn't do that well. But, I mean, at least we carried our ward. And Bernie Hansen did a significant amount in his ward. And that was about it. We just stayed in politics together. How did you meet Jerry Williams? Through um, the political club. The same way. Oh. Matter of fact, I, ran, I met Renslow through there. Actually, I think I met Renslow through Jerry Orbeck because uh, Jerry and Renslow and Chuck knew each other for many years that I didn't know about. And I met a lot of the other people through the club. Um. Were you working the same company all this time? Um, I started at GATX in 1974, and I left there in 1986. Jerry left office in 87. Uh, in 86, I went to Sears Roebuck, and they transferred me out to the Burbs. I went out worked in the tower. They transferred me out to the Burbs. Um, I couldn't deal with that commute every day. Couldn't stand the driving, so in 1989, I went to Amico, and I've been there since. So I've always had uh, private industry jobs, always. Um, I do this because I like to. That's fine. Yes, that's yeah. Fine. Nice paycheck. Um, you got in. You got in. Let's say in in June of '83. Um, Jane Byrne issued an executive order banning discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, were you any part of that executive order? Or no, was I it, wasn't. That was no, I wasn't. Before your time. That was a little before my time, but I think your date is wrong. Could be. That's got to be wrong because she was already defeated. The election was in February. What the primary? Uh, put a question mark next to it. Yeah, put a question mark next to it, yeah. She was defeated, I think, if I, not, if, if I got my dates right. No, I wasn't. I, no, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I met Jane Byrne as mayor uh, through my contact at GATX, but uh, I really didn't have an active part with her okay. re-election campaign. I worked with Jerry Orbeck instead. Were there other, any other um, issues that you were involved with in, in Chicago, and especially among the gay, gay issues, or any organizations? Um? Well, of course, um, Gay Chicago, or Greater Chicago Gay and Lesbian Democrats uh, turned to Prairie State. Mm -hmm. I continue with that as treasurer. I was chairman of political action. I continue with that as treasurer. And it kind of faded away. But how did it fade um, away? Impact started very strongly. Somehow they were able to attract more people than we were. 
Uh, maybe the climate was changing and we didn't change fast enough. So we folded and they started up. And um, that's pretty much the end of that particular uh, mm -hmm. club. But then what happened, I started with, um, with Ed Roswell because I met him. And when Jerry folded his commitments campaign, because if you're not alderman anymore, why, why, why do you want to be committeeman? And he got appointed judge. So then Ed Rosewell was running as he moved to the 46th Ward. And, um, and we've been friends for many years because I met him through political circles. And I know he's always helped the gay community with giving jobs to people and from the Toll Road Commission and all of that. I worked with him, and uh, he immediately made me the treasurer of his campaign to be committed to the 46th Would Ward. Would that have been in 87 then? or That was in 88. 88. Yeah, I think 88. Yeah. So I basically been have, actually until now, I've got, I've had the treasurership of a 46th Ward Democratic organization since 1984, and I still have it. But, um, no, he... He asked me to be the term for his, uh, actually he asked me to term, the term for both, to be elected committeeman and also after he was committeeman of the accounts. And of course I agreed. And we did the same circuit again. You know, we did the advertising, uh, we went to the bars, we met the right people. But of course we knew what the issues were anyway. I mean, we really didn't have to, uh, to work on that too much. Ed was well known, he was well liked in the community and uh, not only our community but everywhere else and it was a total landslide i mean he won by a tremendous amount he became committee in the 46th ward and i worked with him for several years he was an alderman though no he's he treasurer of cook county treasurer of cook county okay. and as current he is the dean of cook county meaning he's the longest holding elected official in cook county not only the elected post but i think it's also the commissioners too at this point he's been a treasurer now for over 21 years. So he's the longest hold, hold, holding post. And um, I worked with him since 87 through 91. And, uh, you know, we did a lot of the usual stuff. I lobbied for things, but he's only committee minutes, not the same thing. Helen Schiller was the alderman. But the gay rights bill did get elected, or they get a, or passed, Good, I should yeah. say. And, um, that lobby, you know, but I mean, I think it was going to be a fait accompli, it was going to get done finally. And it did. I think it got done. I'm not sure who was mayor at that time. I think it was Eugene Sawyer at the time. Because I also got involved in Eugene Sawyer's campaign. <laughs> How'd you do that? Well, one of our people who worked with Jerry Orbeck's campaign, do you have a time schedule? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of our people uh, in Jerry Orbeck's campaign, Leah Blumenthal, um, she's been a political, um, don't say this word, but use a better word, chunky for many years, okay? Takes one to no one. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, when Jerry got defeated, she was involved with Gene Sawyer's people, because Gene got elected. And I met the mayor, and I was extremely impressed. I really enjoyed his company, and I got a Oh, I got a picture here with a signature here someplace, but anyway. I saw something with a signature on it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Gene's a great guy. And he did me a personal favor that I asked for. At the time, because, you know, I met him as mayor, and at the time, um, my I worked at Sears. Uh, national manager at Sears is um, a captain on the ship. I mean, it's God, okay? And he was data processing. He has 25th anniversary of Sears. We got a proclamation from the mayor, one of those things that you could get if you, if you know the people. And he um, said, this is uh, John Weeb Day, W-E-I-B-E, -E, day for Sears. It's John's 25 years, Sears is Chicago Corporation, blah, blah, blah. Leah, who I know very well, she came down, she presented it to them, the big ceremony at Sears, and I was indebted to Gene after that. I mean, it was like, he didn't have to do it for me, he did, because I helped him. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked on a lot of the issues together, because Chuck Renslow and myself went to meet his brother, it was Charles Sawyer, with Leah, during the campaign. 
And he did this for me. I mean, I'll never forget that as long as I live. I mean, it's really... The mayor of Chicago doing a favor for you? I mean, it's not something you get every day. <laughs> he didn't have to do it. Yeah. And he did. He did. And, he, and um, I worked on his campaign. At that time, he was running against Daly. Even though I had ties to Daly, um, Daly wasn't a mentor at that time or anything. And... Um, I uh, I worked for Gina in an election against Daly, and of course Daly won. And um, then in my separation from Gina, of course I just went with uh, the current administration. And this uh, Ed was still committeeman. Ed Roswell was still committeeman. And uh, I'm trying to think of my timing now. This would have been 1991. Daly already got elected. Now so now we're in tight with Daly. I'm in tight with Daly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know him personally, and uh, but Ed does. Ed Rosewell did very, very well. And um, I'm trying to think of where we were doing things together, and um, so we just worked with. Uh, now, who's this? Um, well, that's Gary Hart, Jerry Williams, and myself. Went. Oh yeah, no, not to mention. Oh, I couldn't recognize Jerry. It's kind of faded, but yeah, I see that now. Yeah. When he, was he here campaigning for president at the time? Yes, he was. Jerry, uh, myself, Ben Allen from the uh, Lucky Horseshoe. We went down to Indianapolis, Indiana to Simon Estate, Mel Simon's Estate. Gary Hart, this is when he was going to run for uh, president. You'll have to forgive me on a year. I forgot what year that was, but whatever it was. And we went for like a uh, big fundraiser. It was a lot of fun. And that's when I was with the bar. Forget about the bar. You don't care about that. <laughs> Which bar were you with? The Rage. The Rage. I was one of the owners of the Rage, yeah. Why, why do you want to forget about the Rage? Oh, uh, let's, let's put it this way. We didn't do well. I went bankrupt, so. <laughs> Lousy business decision. How did you happen to get into a bar business? Well, when you get in politics and you know the bar owners, everybody wants to be in a bar business. And um, it's glamorous until you find out what it's really like. When you can't handle it, you can't handle it. This? That is a classic, classic picture. That's Bernie Stone, Dorothy Tillman, and Jerry Orbeck. That's just the time. Now, this is a Jerry's fundraiser where Bernie Stone insulted Dorothy or the other way around, and they were all together, and Jack Sitar took the picture. <laughs> and that was a classic. That got printed in... Uh, Chicago Magazine or something like that. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, that got that was a real, real classic. Where we you, you would have, you would have, where were you? Do you remember what was that? That was a Jerry Orbeck fundraiser at the Park West that Jim Flint put on. Uh huh. Right. Here's another thing with like, well, Jerry would politic. Where's Jerry? He's here someplace. Me, Jane Byrne, her daughter, our diving instructor. <laughs> <laughs> Park West again. Oh God, I didn't want to say something else too on all of this. It was with Flint or somebody? Like here's where we are when we're doing that key rights thing on the council. It didn't work. Bernie Hansen was heavily involved with that too, as you could see with this. Definitely, he was involved. So we can't cut Bernie out. So what happened then, um, I was involved then when Daly won. I was with Ed Rosewell, the treasurer, and I worked on a lot of gay issues. And um, Mayor Daly, he was mayor at the time, he came to one of Ed Rosewell's fundraisers at the at St. George Neck. And um, well, you can see the picture over here. I worked for the administration as best as possible. Ed was committeeman. He was also treasurer of the 46th ward. I mean, a treasurer of the uh, of Cook County. And um, just worked together as best we could on all the issues, the gay issues. But the gay rights ordinance was already passed at that time. What do you, what do you think brought Daly around to being supportive of the gay community as much as That's yours? a tough one to say because I was at a lot of the rallies. I was at... Um, one of the first functions he went to was at um, Different Strokes 
I forget the year, but I remember he was very, he was a little uneasy, wasn't too happy about being there. But I think he had some coaching ahead of time as his supporters of Ronald Near. This is when, when he was running for mayor. I was in the background because Gene Sawyer did me a tremendous favor. I could not get involved in that campaign one way or the other. I just couldn't. I mean, it's like I got loyalty to one guy. It's like I just wanted to stay neutral, but I went to the thing. Sure. I won't be a hypocrite. If anything, I'll just stay out of it. And um, he was alone. He, he, he was.